a big hello and a warm welcome to all of you amazing and beautiful people out there welcome to my channel and welcome to this video this collective reading is for those people who are trying to heal from narcissistic abuse it's very important to understand that narcissism is everywhere around us so it's not like we can escape from it we have to face it we have to see it because this whole world is very narcissistic we are actually living in the most narcissistic generation of all times an awakening was so important a collective awakening was such a big need of the hour because now that some people are going to awaken some people are already awakening they are going to pave way for the coming generation who's not going to be hopefully so narcissistic but of course narcissism is on the rise because of the gadgets we have because of the life we live and if god has given us this life there has to be a reason behind it because with this lifestyle there's also a lot of freedom that people are getting the freedom that people in dark ages did not get now we can choose what to watch what to not watch we can choose who to watch who not to watch we can choose at least our habits certain habits can actually make a lot of difference even if you are near the phone all the time or you have to be around the screens i mean screens are everywhere there was a time when there were limited screens not so many people had screens there was not so much technology but now the screens are everywhere so we need to go within we need to meditate we should meditate every day we should remember god every day so that no matter how many screens are around us they also only project the god's path because screens also show what's within you screens are also somehow connected to you or else why would you be listening to these collective readings you could be listening to something else you could be watching something else right there are so many people on the planet who still watch porn there are so many people on this planet who are still stuck in the same low frequency low vibration things but we are not we are lucky to not be over there however in this collective reading i can pick on to people who are probably being chased by a narcissistic person or they are understanding the things that narcissistic people do so they can act with discernment and not get very flattered by it because as i said that as you do more and more inner work you become more and more attractive people are going to like you people are going to ask you out people are going to follow you people are going to be there for you and good people will be there bad people will be there right people will be there wrong people will be there you're just in the middle of everything sometimes this attention is not bad also you're getting attention from people you feel okay nice this is nice i'm getting good attention from people but then we also need to remember what we have learned on this journey so here the narcissist i'm being shown is like a typical narcissistic person uh love bombing is this person's primary weapon and initial love bombing initially this person is going to say and do everything for you like they they want you to like them and i can say if you have leveled up maybe you dated a narcissist in the past it was not a easy relationship it was a tough relationship you came out of it it probably took you years to heal some of you could be in the healing process right now so it took you while to understand that certain things you should not be very happy about so right now you could be getting tested by god maybe you're being checked like how much work you have done so when this narcissist is doing love bombing telling you all the right things mirroring your words copying your words you say something and 10 minutes later they're saying the same thing they're repeating you these are the things that narcissists are very well versed with and these are the things that most people like most people like these things who doesn't like attention who doesn't like someone who's constantly messaging you constantly calling you urging you to be with them being persistent but we need to actually also understand the difference because sometimes people do this when they also love you i mean in a healthy way in a healthy manner people who love you they also call you people who love you they also message you people who love you they also check on you right they care for you they will prepare meals for you 
or they will take you out somewhere or they will talk to you it's a natural thing you naturally want to call up someone and talk to them some friendships also develop over a period of time like initially when you meet a person uh you could be very close and then there's a bad phase there's a fight that happens and you don't talk so much to each other or there's a crisis situation there's some kind of testing that you go through then maybe in in healing also this happens and after few years the friendship becomes really strong you start counting on that person so i always tell people it's the test of time with the narcissists they are in some kind of a hurry because they've got some agenda and also you are like a challenge for the narcissist especially if you're spiritual especially if you got mission you got goals you got lifestyle choices which are very healthy you have uh, very bold opinions and you are strong minded narcissist are usually drawn to such people because this shows real confidence and narcissist also live on confidence they also have confidence the only difference is that their confidence is superficial so it's ego versus soul it's ego versus source so they are getting their confidence from ego from materialism from a lot of other things you know that they do on a daily basis you are getting confidence from god god gives you confidence you got god confidence so everybody likes people who have confidence i mean if you go to any place you're going to be someone that people are going to talk to want to talk to why because you are so chilled out so carefree and it's my personal experience also when we are not in the right state of mind we are not you know nobody wants to talk to you nobody wants to be around you a lot of people go through this uh, situation where sometimes when they go out they step out everybody is staring at them or everybody is looking at them sometimes they have to really look at themselves like what's wrong with me am i wearing something weird or is there something on my face is there something wrong with my hair why is everyone looking at me why why are people staring at me they're not staring at you they're staring at your energy so you have that type of effect you have that type of energy and i know people who do inner work they go through this a lot that one day they are healing one day they are happy and the next day they are not one day they could be jumping everywhere they could be on cloud nine next day they may, they may not be this happens a lot with people uh, in this ascension process it can be confusing but there comes a point when you are done with it sometimes these narcissists are literally planted on on the way like they are appearing at the right time they actually help you a lot whenever a narcissist comes in anyone's life whenever they come in your life they actually bring in a level of excitement they bring in that level of excitement for sure which is why they become so addictive at first they are the ones who are going to be obsessed about you they will feel like they're obsessed about you and they are so much into you they're going to give you so much attention i mean they can talk to you for hours they'll care for you in ways that you cannot even imagine if you're not well they'll call you multiple times they'll you know look for medicines to give you i remember there was one guy he he would uh, he was very good with nature related stuff okay so he knew a lot of nature cures nature remedies so he would keep telling me do this do that take this flower take this leaf you know crush it make this mixture he would send me all the ideas and he would show so much concern okay so initially these type of these type of things can feel very nice but the narcissist biggest problem is that they are not consistent that's why they are a narcissist that's why you are an empath despite all the up down up down up down the ebbs and flows you are consistent even right now i won't even use the word empath or narcissist here i would just say seeker because seeker sadhak you know student of life student sounds like perfect thing you're still consistent you're still doing your inner work so many years have passed by but you are not going to quit narcissist is going to quit that's the biggest difference they are going to quit and they will look for somebody else after a while and most narcissists have multiple options yes they do today they'll talk to you and they'll talk to you 
so much they'll make you feel that you're the only person who is in their life you're the only one they talk to you're the only one they've been waiting for yes you'll hear these statements from them that i was waiting for you all these years i was waiting for you all this while i was waiting for you these are literally it's actually shocking every narcissist will say this statement that i was waiting for someone like you are you the one and it sounds like wow this person was waiting for me they make a person feel so special but only for a short period of time and you should be prepared for that i'm not saying you're creating a reality based on this i'm just saying you should be prepared for that because it's not that you meeting the narcissist for the first time you have met these samples these characters before also and each time is just a new face but each time there are similar some similar traits but yes as we grow in the journey the quality of narcissist also changes because narcissist are also living in their own world they are also going through things they are also dealing with some things so their problem is materialism i mean whatever they're going to do even if it's a narcissist who is in solitude who lives a reclusive reclusive kind of life lives all by itself himself or herself but they will also have something to do they're doing something and why do they stay away from people or attention they also step out but they only step out for some kind of materialistic gain otherwise they'll not get ready and put all the effort and put on the makeup or put on their best suit if it's a male look good look dapper look charming you know and step out because they know when they get dressed and they step out there is some kind of transaction that's going to happen so they also step out they go for parties they have lot of social gatherings all these narcissists usually have lots of friends they can always pick up the phone and go to this one or that one but they also stay within themselves many of them do that many rich wealthy famous popular you know they stay in their own zone even those who are doing good work narcissism as i said is not entirely bad not that all narcissists are evil people they are psychos no some of them are very smart some of them have also figured out over a period of all these years what type of energy they want to be surrounded with they definitely want those people who push their narrative further either you're going to be someone they want to be around because they feel there's something about you so initially they are also trying out with people they are attracted to people and they don't hide it if they are attracted to you if a narcissist falls for you they will show it to you they'll show it in a big way empaths usually don't do that because they are just very careful with people narcissists are not that careful with people cuz they already know they've already logged a person in they know their targets they know who they want to interact with in 5 minutes they'll figure out who they want to interact with who they want to talk to and if they like you if they find you mysterious enough they then want to crack your mystery they want to break the code they want to find out they want to figure out what irritates you what takes you and you know they can cut off really easily too most narcissists are very good in this when they don't want a person or when they are done with a person they can easily cut the cord this is the reason why they create or they cause so much havoc in other people's life because as much as we like to believe that all the love all the affection all the love bombing all the attention that they're showing to you is real usually it's not real and when they leave anyone they make a person they make sure they make a person feel like it's all their fault it's all your fault i did it because of you you don't suit my needs so they are so privileged basically they want to put a person down in a way that look you are supposed to be nice to me you are supposed to work according to me you know the difference between the narcissist and empath is the empath is going to tell even the seeker is going to tell people in the very beginning that look these are 
the things I don't like to do. They create a boundary. They like to create boundaries in the very beginning. But the narcissist would say, that's okay. I'll take it. That's okay. That's okay with me. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I still want you. I'll do whatever to please you. I'll be around you. So if it takes them six months, one year, three months, whatever time to get into that circle, the periphery, the peripheral energetic construct that you have around you, your space, when you start depending on them, that's when they cut the cord. When they create havoc everywhere in your life. It's like they want to win your trust. They want to make you depend on them totally. And that's when they walk away. So how to live in this narcissistic society, in this narcissistic world? Don't depend on anyone other than God. Yes, this is the best way to go. No matter how good looking, attractive, endearing, loving, confident, this, that, a narcissist is, they got issues. They know they got issues. They're not going to talk about their issues in front of you. So, they also teach people something. Don't share everything with a narcissist. Don't talk about your issues with them. If they want to help you out, great. If they want to be participant in something, fine. But this curiosity that they have about you is not a childlike pure curiosity that they want to know about you because they really like you, because they really love you. It's more like they want to know what's your weakness. It's a power game. It's a power struggle for them. If they know your weakness, they will play on that. What if you don't have any weakness? I'm not saying you're perfect, you're flawless. But what if you don't have a weakness? You don't have a materialistic weakness. You know, uh, one more thing I want to share over here, which is uh, very lovely, very fascinating. Although people in the twin flame ascension journey focus a lot on getting the right person in your life, attracting the right partner and having the perfect relationship. But as you go further up in the spiritual ascension journey, you will be very stunned to know that some people actually don't have perfect relationships. They don't have uh, the right person in their life. But they stick around with that person and they become immune in front of that person or around that person. And it also happens when you level up in this journey because this journey is, is like how much far do you want to go? How deep into the rabbit hole can you go kind of thing? You know, how much deeper you go, it will take you that deep. There's no end to this journey. Ascension is a lifestyle. There is no end, there's no beginning. And you can actually feel it. Imagine this is no more a frustration for you then it becomes true devotion. You enjoy it. You enjoy this, like this never-ending sort of quest of knowing the truth. The more you go into it, the more you find out. It's also like Ramayan. They say Ramayan Satkoti Apara, which means Ramayan can take you 100 crores time deeper. 100 crores is huge, right? And I, I used to, actually as a child, I really want to talk about this because narcissism is narcissism versus empathy is taught so well in Ramayana. When I was a child, I knew Ramayana just as a story, you know, Ram and Ravan story. But now, all these years have passed by and every time I read Ramayana, every time I study something about Ramayana, my great grandmaster's Ramayana, it's even more fascinating because he's written it in such a brilliant, beautiful way. I mean, I really wish everybody could read Hindi. Everybody would know Hindi. Such a beautiful language, you know, such a lovely language. It's made on Devanagiri, Devanagiri script. So English language is basically coming from the word Grimwell. Grammar comes from Grimwell, which is actually the book of spells. So when we speak in English, we are actually speaking the language of spells. 
and english is also very recent language it's not an old language there were many other languages much more ancient languages before this native languages were there indigenous languages were there but it is said that devanagari script it is the most ancient oldest most archaic and most original and devanagari means that it's coming from divine many languages are actually coming from this lipi the script sanskrit prakrit hindi marathi konkani nepalese it's coming from the brahmic font brahmic style and uh, what is brahmic style basically grimwell or grammar when you look at english language you can see how confusing it is like at the kitchen garden uh, we have children you know we teach the underprivileged kids so sometimes when we are teaching them english those kids because they have not gone to school they have never studied english they get very confused with the sounds and with the vowels and with the words the teacher was telling me the other day she was actually teaching someone some kid and she was trying to explain them uh, how to break sat and sit the word sat and sit and i mean the sound e is so clear in hindi language you know e you know e you know o you know o every sound in hindi language has a phonetic associated like we have alphabets we have the varnamala in hindi so every sound has a varna so it's very easy to learn the language once you know how to write in hindi you know how to speak hindi you can look at the word and you can pronounce it easily it's going to be the exact accurate pronunciation whatever is written that's what you speak this is the language of divine there is no illusion there is no confusion there is no delusion but english language itself is so confusing i mean of course i was very lucky we all learned it like a language so we can speak well most people who speak good english they can speak english because they learned it via sound you know with with the listening and hearing but those people who have to learn right from beginning those kids they can get very confused especially if they've no they've never watched english movies or they've never heard english songs or they've never lived in that culture or in that lifestyle because you write a and the same a can be pronounced in five different ways so it confuses a child's mind this world of inner work is very deep see from one topic to another we can shift so easily it is so interesting because everything is literally connected with each other language is connected with inner work our communication is connected with inner work and i am actually very grateful to god that you all from different parts of the world are connected to this type of content because you are living in different parts of the world so in a way this curse has also become a boon for a lot of us english language for a lot of people it may not be our mother tongue language my mother tongue language is definitely not english your mother tongue language may not be english if you are listening to me then comment what's your mother tongue language so we all come from different native backgrounds and we have beautiful culture behind us but we are intertwined intertwined with this western culture which has become the global language and the global way of living however now people are changing people are trying to look at it just as a language and who knows in future they'll all going to come with a symbolism a brand new you know alphabet uh, sort of thing where you know that if you say a this is how you write it and if you say a ah, you write it in a different way in hindi that's how you do if you have a you can write a if you have a ah, you can write a ah. so the language also is a divine language it is what it is it is based on the principle of truth and reality so we need to actually use this the difference between the narcissist and the seeker is literally narcissist is walking on the path of what looks good and whatever they see whatever it's like the alphabets in english it looks like something else but it may sound something else so they might look like something but they may be something else inside whereas the person who's on the right path god's path they are not going to do any pretense yeah if they like the narcissist of course they are also attracted to the narcissist in some way otherwise they would not be giving so much time to the narcissist if you are into the narcissist at least you accept it you don't play any games with them you give them time they are demanding they are demanding your attention and they do it very easily they do it very seamlessly and they might put it on you they might put the blame on you they might say that you are the one who is making me do all this 
you are the one who is attracting me towards you you are the one who is playing mind games you are the one who is rude to me you are the one who is throwing attitude at me you are the one who is doing this that blah 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 they will say those things to you you know why because they want that godfidence but they can't have it and god is sending you these narcissists not to hurt you but to teach you something amazing cuz you know all these years have passed by you keep meeting new people don't you some of you keep meeting people i mean uh when you broke up with the first narcissistic person the first turmoil the first horrible relationship the painful relationship it may have felt like you'll never fall in love again you'll never meet anyone again but as much as the narcissist are making tons of efforts to meet people you're meeting people effortlessly it's just a much better version now by the time i won't even say by the time here because i know as i was talking about uh, those cases lots of people in inner work they choose the narcissistic partner and they live their whole life with the narcissistic partner and people and they keep them around how they say keep your friends close but keep your enemy closer why i'm saying it in a humorous way because sometimes your own loved ones are narcissists you know and you keep them close to you because they are the ones who are going to put the fear in you and they are going to give you reasons to work on yourself or they're going to give you the fodder they'll give you the stimuli the precious stimuli and i just love to sometimes hang out with the narcissist because though their energy can get a bit heavy so of course i can always go away and step away from them but it's really interesting to see how much they believe the illusion and sometimes a lot of them actually know that the things they're telling you the things they are scaring you about like some of my people always try to scare me they always tell me age related things every time every time they tell me you know age also has an effect on you hormones have effect on you come on you can't do this you can't do that and trust me i've been doing everything that they've been telling me not to do so many years have passed by so many years have passed by since my childhood literally i'm actually doing everything that they've told me don't do it it will be very harmful for you i've done exactly the same thing so sometimes they help you rebel in a very beautiful way or they help you reach to the answers like if they tell you like the other day someone really who cares for me and i'm not saying narcissists cannot care for people narcissists also care for people they love people they also care for people they buy presents for you the curiosity never dies even in their eyes cuz those people some of them are really tied to your uh life your destiny some of them are tied to you via blood relationship some of them are tied to you uh via destiny so they're going to care for you but their caring and concern will also come with certain fears if they care for you then they'll also tell you hey you should be careful about those things you know there was a time they were all very scared about the animals they would keep telling me animals have infection these things you hear in the first new stages you know beginning stages when you like when i started writing also they were telling me that you're never going to make a living out of this uh and i used to take it very seriously guys that's why i can tell you today from my own experience don't take them seriously cuz when i used to take them seriously i used to go into dark nights which would last really long and which would really f up my system still they don't know what i talk about half of the things i talk about they cannot even understand like if i tell them look i i gonna heal myself via my therapy because all the therapies i do for other people i do it for myself also and it really works like magic so if i am sad or if i am unwell or if, I, if something is happening to me i will tell them well i'm going to do therapy and i'll be better soon and they'll be like why do you have to say these weird things why don't you just go to the doctor and i tell them i am the doctor i heal other people i cannot go to the doctor so they say it's against your ego I said no if i really need to go to the doctor i will go to the doctor but i'm not going to go to the doctor because i'm scared because i'm scared of whatever is going to happen to me there are so many 
uh, diseases and so many problems. It's not that seekers don't have diseases. Seekers don't get headaches or cold or cough or this or that. Everyone goes through these things. These are sometimes nature's way of also removing the toxins from your body and preparing for you for the next season. But every time uh, in the narcissistic world when they fall ill or they fall sick or there's a problem, they will do typical things. You know, if they have a fight with someone, typical things. Let's go and complain to the police. What are the police going to do? I mean, I watch a lot of these uh, documentaries. I've seen so many cases. I really love these cases. And probably I will do some interesting stuff, creative stuff around these cases also. You should uh, subscribe to my channel, Narration by Suna, because I would be sharing stories like these where... Everything can change actually just because we don't change, people don't change their perspective, things don't change. So it's all about putting in fear, you know, in people's minds. Some of the content we watch, it is so scary that after watching that content, you cannot step out for a walk in the night because you're going to feel like something is going to attack you. So my people, of course, they're not living the life that I'm living. And I'm sure this is happening with a lot of you. And I'm freely talking about it, guys. I, I know they all watch my content and they love me a lot. They care for me. But they know that I am different. I am different as compared to so many people around me. And lots and lots of people actually look at me day in and day out. Like, what is this girl up to? So when I started caring for the animals, you have no idea how many people tried to stop me. I still remember... Many years ago, I was feeding some puppies, some puppies, newborn puppies. They had not even opened their eyes. And there were two ladies, they complained against me. They called the police against me. <laughs> Can you believe that? Because I was feeding puppies. But actually, the story was something else. They would actually walk around me and they would see me and they would say, Hey, why are you feeding the dogs? They're going to bite you. First, they tried to scare me. They're going to bite you. They're going to attack you. Don't do it. And I would say, no, they don't attack me. They're very nice to me. Okay. And then they would go into things like, it's a street dog. It's unhygienic. It's dirty. It's smelly. It's stinky. And I would always come up with rebuttals. Oh, much better than people who stink. Much better than the, the dirt that people cause. Like somebody would tell me, some people, like many people have told me, these, these animals make the place dirty birds dogs cows blah 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 and in india we have so many cows right and i would always ask these people what about the people who urinate on the streets what about the people who spit on the streets what about all the open sewers what about all these dirty places all the garbage that human beings have created you might live in a fancy place you might live in a fancy colony but there is a garbage dump everywhere what about all the plastic what about all the pollution? What about all the construction waste? You don't see that as a problem, but you see a dog or a cat or a bird as a problem? Like seriously? And in India, there are so many places which are full of filth. You know, there's so much dirt everywhere. There's so much garbage everywhere. These people are not focused on that garbage. They are focused on a voiceless being. So when they would come to me, I would give them such rebuttals that they would get really pissed off. Like their ego would get hurt. And I'm talking about really initial stages, guys, when I really st like started putting my heart and soul into it. Initially, where I come from, there were only people who would not... There were people who would only have breeds. People would never even adopt indie dogs. Now, they're adopting or they're caring for indigenous animals. They are caring for street animals. But when I started out many years ago, this is actually like a revolution. We are a part of the revolution. You know, I remember people would not adopt Indian dogs or the so-called street animals. And I would say, look, they're also from some breed everybody has a breed every dog has a breed on the street every cat has a breed it's just that you are looking at it as a street dog as a filthy street dog or a filthy bad thing on the street 
that's why you don't know the value of it it's going to love you the same way and it's much more healthy so i always had rebuttals and i had adopted three indie dogs i picked them on the from the street i would go for adoption campaigns and i started feeding street animals and people used to create so much trouble for me i have even been attacked by a mob for feeding street animals yes so those things if i start talking about those things the narcissism the level of narcissism that i have faced in my life is insane and is it's been there in my life since i don't know i can't even remember since when but these narcissists have really helped me today when i walk on the street and i see people caring for street animals so many people feeding street animals so many people fighting for their rights there's so much awareness about animals birds and look at the global warming look at what people are going through now they're suffering they're miserable the the heat the we- they cannot they cannot adjust in the weather why because they're not stepping out of the houses if it's a hot day i always step out you know why because there are people who are working on the streets there are guards there are vendors there are animals there are so many people on the streets there are shopkeepers working outside in the summer heat all those people who serve us the delivery boys the delivery girls you know they are all stepping out from their house they are all doing it when i see them i don't feel that hot or that cold because i feel that if these people are surviving into this and they are serving other people they are doing a job right now then why do we all crib so much the problem with people is they are not getting up they are not getting out they are not getting air they are not stepping outside they are not walking on the ground they are not doing hard work even their basic things they cannot do because we have so much technology people are not even washing their own clothes or their utensils so then it becomes more important for us to do some physical work some physical labor in the outdoor not in the gym not in the gym not in an enclosed place not that you you know get into your from the ac you get into the car in the house you have the ac in the car you have the ac then you go to the gym there you have the ac and you are trying to sweat it out it's unhealthy lifestyle no matter how much they promote this consumerism or materialism it is unhealthy i mean it's okay you can sit in the comfort of your house why not have a cooler have an ac but also step out also do some physical work also put yourself in situations where you are facing the nature not just facing the nature you are in the lap of nature so narcissist care for you but they are also going to put fear in you you know why because they themselves live in those fears so when god sends these narcissists to you who are love bombing you who are sending you good morning good night messages who are like please meet me let's go for coffee let's go to party let's go do this let's watch a movie blah 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 i mean for me going to a movie sounds absurd now can you imagine <laughs> going for a coffee sounds absurd but you ask me to go out and feed 20 animals i would love to do it any time you tell me to go to the park i can go any time especially with the beautiful weather that we have so you see all the people were crying and cribbing about hot summer hot summer 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 when it's winter they say oh it's so cold it's so cold it's so cold it's so cold when it's hot oh it's so hot it's so hot so now it's beautiful weather it's monsoon it's amazing it's raining but no one's talking about the desperation the madness they showed for two months of summer i love summer summer is amazing what's wrong with summer you just need to be careful you need to drink water you need to look for shade you need to care for yourself little bit you have to do but summer is not bad in the narcissistic world everything is seen as it's extreme you fall sick get a health insurance right away why not look within and realize or understand or try to introspect why is the sickness making us so upset 
Why? Why is disease making us so upset? Why is disease troubling us? Sometimes we actually become very grateful when we fall sick. Like uh, when we fall sick, we realize that how amazing it is to be normal and healthy. How lovely it is to feel, you know, amazing, normal when you wake up. You have cold. You want to heal fast from it. Why? Because we are so grateful at that point in time. Look at people in the hospitals. They are going through so much. When you look at them, you feel so grateful. When I look at underprivileged children who we spend time with, we teach them, we hang out with them, I feel, first of all, I feel really they are not underprivileged. They Materialistically, they could be underprivileged. But God really is watching out, watching on them, caring for them because they are getting such good people to educate them. I am not talking about myself. I am not the only person on this planet. There are so many wonderful people. In fact, everybody should give credit to Source. I was telling my friend the other day, uh, one of my friends who, who does these things too, she's also very dedicated, very devoted. I was telling her, you know, the reason why people find us to be weird, people say these things that look at them, they are hanging out with these dirty kids and dirty animals and look at them what they are doing, is because they don't know how peaceful it is to do this. They don't know the level of contentment we get from this. They don't know the level of joy we get from this. And I was, I was just talking about the weather. It started raining outside. So here in this collective reading, I just want to share with you guys that if you are getting hounded by the narcissist or you like the narcissist or you have narcissist people in your life, it's okay. And I'm going to complete that point where I've read about a lot of high vibrational sages, people who were in the Grahas ashram, people who were married, they probably didn't have the same kind of partner as they were. Like, even as I keep talking about my experiences, uh, I know a lot of people who are in mission. They are twin flames. And they have soulmates. They have twin flame connections also. But they are not married to someone who is like them. They are married to a very typical 3D person. And when I say typical 3D person, I am not putting them down or anything. As I said, narcissists also care for people, right? They also care for people. They also have long-term relationships with people. In simple words, what is narcissism? Narcissism is extreme attachment to the physical body, the physical world, the material stuff. That's what it is. And for them, it is, it is what's tangible. They don't understand your talks, your 5D talks. They don't see 5D as tangible. For you, 5D is tangible. Like when we hang out with the kids, when we teach the kids or when we are with the animals, the street animals, we feel that peace and that joy, it is tangible feeling. We cannot attain that feeling elsewhere. We don't feel so fulfilled and satisfied elsewhere. Right? But it's not a tangible feeling for them. Sometimes my own people look at me and they go like, what do you like about this? Even the work that I'm doing with you guys, it's tangible for me, right? Because I have, I'm watching your comments. I'm meeting people. I'm doing therapy work. I know people are going through this. It is a tangible experience for me. Same for you. You are listening to someone right now who is sharing her real experiences, her struggles. It's raining so beautifully, guys. Wow, I wish I could show it to you. I was planning on going to my kitchen garden but now it has rained so beautifully so I will go there a bit later but today is going to be a beautiful day because it's raining, it's so nice, the weather is so pleasant and all those people who were complaining and cribbing during the summers, they are all quiet.
because this is what nature is nature changes there will be day there will be night there will be sun there will be moon there will be rain there will be summer there will be winter there will be autumn this is a part of life and the society we live in the world we live in it also changes spirituality is not something you can force on to people spirituality also doesn't mean deny the parts that don't suit you spirituality also doesn't mean run away from things that don't make you happy spirituality means inner work means to face it to watch it and to be okay with the difference to be okay with the polarity so what if there is polarity life can be very beautiful experience when we have gratitude when we have acceptance and uh, we are not scared of the things that things that don't match us so don't suit us i mean sometimes people are there just to make us realize our, our gifts or just to make us flourish in our natural state of being i was talking about saintly people i was talking about uh, yogis rishis who were in grihasth ashram they married someone who was so not like them and in some cases completely opposite of them in some cases they were not even happy to be with them the partners were not happy to be with them but they were okay the seekers were okay with it now that i feed animals or i care for animals i have friends who are in mission they are working really well but their partners are not supportive their partners always create problems for them or they are always unhappy they are always complaining why do you have to do this why do you have to do that and this makes my friends who are into this devoted into this even more dedicated because they feel that if other people have the right to live their life other people have the right to eat the pizza i also have the right to eat the salad i might love the salad i might not love the pizza so much i mean i can eat pizza also salad also but yeah of course there was a time when i used to order pizza all the time pizza pasta i'm talking about myself right now and now i don't feel the need of when i say now again now means good number of time i don't feel the need of it in fact sometimes i feel if you really want to eat a pizza it's better to make your own pizza at home you know why why even go out because the same cheese that they put on the pizza the same cheese that's in your fridge the same bread the same veggies the same spices actually so this sustainability this acceptance this love towards nature towards god it's coming because of the narcissist thanks to the narcissist had those narcissists not been in your life you won't have been so sure about what you really want to do so there was one student and he had gone to meet his teacher his guru and he was very impressed by the guru the way the guru conducted himself the way the guru talked about life about relationships about marriages also about god about any topic so the student was totally surrendered to the teacher to the master and the student respected his guru a lot he would never imagine he had never seen even when he would interact with the guru when other students were there never seen anyone disrespect the guru even once even once people just adored him people just loved him wherever he went he was such a gentle compassionate loving kind hearted person so next is one fine day the student goes to meet the teacher to his house we have some guest these this one this baby she was in the rain she came to my house all drenched so guys this is all happening in real time she is a street dog yes good job hmm good job good girl good girl she just came to my house 
in the middle of this channeling. So many cool things are happening. This is Madam Simran. She, look at her. She's so happy. Happy after playing in the rain. So dogs know, animals know where to go, which house to go to for support. Bad jaw, Ram se bato. Simu? Yes. Good girl. <laughs> good girl. You're a good girl. You're a cutie pie. You're a cutie pie. You look beautiful. <laughs> good girl. They just know where to go, whose house to go to. So this is what my family gets shocked with. Why would you allow the dogs to sit on the sofa or, you know. But it's okay, right? It's okay. I mean, this can be all washed. This can go for dry cleaning. Doesn't matter. But they should be all comfortable. They should have some place to go to. I was not imagining this type of rain, to be honest. I mean, so yeah, so this student actually goes to the master's house, to the teacher's house, to the guru's house, I would say. And uh, he was expecting his wife to be really nice and caring. Like, you know, generally we have this perception. Actually, the student was not even thinking about his wife. It was, he had seen the guru, the master in so many situations, handling people, talking to people. He just casually went to the house, but as soon as he rang the doorbell or he knocked on the door, back in those days they did not have doorbells. So he knocked on the door and this lady opened the door and she was extremely rude and she was like, why are you here? I mean, you jobless people, you just keep coming here for nothing. And she was speaking like this to him, she didn't even know him. Because she knew, of course, this man, this man, this guy has come to meet my husband. So she kept on cribbing, cribbing, cribbing. She continued saying something. She kept on murmuring things. And he said that I'm here to meet uh, so and so. And she said, yeah, of course I know. People like you keep coming here unnecessarily just to waste time. And then she screamed, you know, like she screamed to call out his name. And as soon as the master came in to that place, to the door, she continued to hurl some negative words and the student was shocked. He was just shocked. He had never imagined that his dear master, who is so brilliant, who is so amazing, who knows everything, would have a partner who would be insulting him even at the door when someone else is there to meet him. In the presence of a student, she would insult him. So the master says, okay, come inside and they sit in the room and on everything, if he would say, bring some tea, the guests are here, she would crib on that. Uh, everything was basically cribbing, complaining, rude words, mean words, but he kept taking it with a smile. It's not a relationship of one days or two days or 10 days, it's a relationship He's been with her for many years and uh, now the student has immense curiosity. So when they step out to get some air, to get into a better environment probably, he looks at the master who was so normal about it. He didn't care at all, like he didn't look troubled. He just looked at the master, he felt so bad for the master. How comes such a great guy has such a partner, this type of life partner, how do you deal with it, why she is insulting you so much and why are you okay with it, why aren't you saying something, why aren't you reacting or responding, why don't you stop it. So the master looked at the student and he smiled and he says, he said that in the past life, in my past life, some of my past lives, we carry the karma, we carry the baggage. I have seen my past lives and in one of the past lives, I was a crow and she was a cow. And a cow or a buffalo, an animal basically, same kind of animal. 
she was hurt she had a wound and i being the crow my nature is to go and poke people so i started poking on to her wound with my beak and i kept doing it doing it doing it doing it so much so that now she is my wife of course at that time she was the animal she started bleeding it was really painful it was really horrible pain for her but i would not stop i just kept doing it because i was enjoying it i was enjoying it it was my nature whatever i went too far with it and i gave her a lot of pain and agony in that life the the wound became bigger the bleeding became more and the worst part was my beak got stuck in it and we got both died together basically we were attached to that that incident that karma now in this life she is the crow and i am that animal now this doesn't mean that she's going to wound me so badly because animals have a natural order also some animals are allowed to do certain things animals follow the nature's order really well but i went like too much into it even as a crow i could have stopped there i could have either fed on some meat and left her alone or i could have just gone by my business but i did not stop and because my beak got stuck into the bones and the flesh she got immense pain she as in that animal got immense pain huge pain lot of pain you cannot explain that pain and uh, then we died together and now we are born as husband and wife now that life's karma i need to pay and because of my ascension because of my inner work i know that this is the reason this is the reason why we are together we are together of course we also have a past life relationship we also have a past life connection so every time she says something to me something mean to me something negative to me i don't feel bad it's good let her let us resolve the karma in this life only why to carry it forward why to wait for four more lives or five more lives and continue this toxic pattern student was shocked he said some of the things as per dharma as per uh, the calculations that are done some of the things i am not going to get that hurt all she is doing is she is just saying things to me that's her nature and i just have to listen to her i just listen to her every time she hurls some mean word to me it makes my penance better i don't react to it the less we react the better it gets so some of us could be tied into relationships where we have to go through something i'm not saying accept abusive relationships or toxic patterns all i'm saying is that look these two people are living under the same roof for so many years and the same wife who is nagging him or saying mean things to him in front of his students she is also cooking his meals she is also washing his clothes she is also doing all his chores so he does speak about that that she is doing all my work also she is a good wife overall she is a good wife but she is not a perfect wife it's not a perfect relationship it's not a lovey dovey relationship where i come back home and she saying hey how was your day when i come back home she goes like oh so you're here done with all your gibberish talking to all your students i don't know what they like about you don't know why they like listening to you nonsense talks i don't believe in these talks fine anyway here's dinner i cooked this for you eat your meal and go off to sleep on time because in the morning you have to go and spread this gibberish this nonsensical talk even more you know these type of words <laughs> or some of the partners they put fear they may not be rude or mean but they constantly put fear like how are we going to survive through this how are we going to make through this we need money we need this we need that constantly they are complaining so you don't feel bad you feel sympathetic towards such partners or such people the covert narcissist because the covert narcissist is always troubled always sounding like they're troubled but they are troubled and they pass around this negativity to people i know somebody 
it's very interesting and it's very funny i find it funny now but there was a time i would not find it funny but every time i would share a beautiful memory or something nice a nice experience even in general life even if i would say something really cool like look at the flowers they're blooming this person is going to say something negative right after 5 minutes related to the same thing like if i would say things like i have a bad stomach pain this person would say don't worry you're not going to die of cancer <laughs> like the worst possible thing you can think of you know or in their <laughs> imagination they must be positive but if if i talk about something some past memory which is very beautiful this person has to bring in their own personal traumatic the worst possible traumatic memory and it happens each time by the way it has been happening for so many years i i from being a person who would who would be like come on don't do this this is annoying to a person who has to i mean who has to laugh at it i find it so funny i'm not kidding but it's it's crazy how can a person in such a beautiful weather in such a beautiful conversation bring in the worst possible memory or the worst possible talk or the worst possible thing which can actually is like a kill joy it's like a mood kill instant mood killer <laughs> it's a talent to be able to do this and still live your day normally like nothing happened so such people are also around us it's okay i think everything is okay it can all it can all be a part of the merging process when the masculine and feminine merges when the polarity merges everything looks okay everything is serving a purpose everything is fine the rain is fine the summer is fine the winter is fine the autumn is fine the narcissist are okay they can go about doing their own things and you can go about doing your own things look she's so happy see me see me look at this tail see me see this is this is what i'm talking about you can be yourself and you can also love the narcissist around you i mean in some cases i know narcissist is also uh someone who creates a lot of havoc but i think it's a part of the process so whenever someone is love bombing you someone is you know it's a narcissistic trait love bombing too much attention too much flattery too many compliments excessive persuasiveness trying to convince you give it time that's my advice give it time that's the advice coming from the collective reading time is going to answer everything and the narcissist many narcissists even the hardcore ones the cold blooded ones they also come back they also apologize they also because they try to punish you they play, they play they play all the childish stupid games you know like i'm going to punish this person i'm going to give them silent treatment or i'm going to make them jealous or i'm going to say these things and those things and blah 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 if it doesn't work on the empath sooner or later the narcissist will realize it I mean you have to become the seeker who doesn't care about anything doesn't get affected by anything where their tactics are their tactics are because they want you to serve them they want you to do what they want you to do basically and you don't want to do any of those things you are living your life they might also try to make you step out from your journey and become like them sometimes bad habits bad people with bad habits do that they have an effect on us influence on us we say oh so what let's chill for a while and then it can con completely consume us so you have to be careful about such things you hang out with some people you gossip with them one hour you gossip with them think about the impact it's going to have on your energy as soon as they start gossiping you can make a move so when these narcissists when they come back to you now i'm talking about those who come back to you they will come back to you it's a hard difficult thing for them to come back to you and they expect you to accept them with open arms 
like just be happy and elated when they back to you cuz come on they did such a big thing they had to trample on their ego they're not going to tell you that they insulted you they humiliated you they made you feel stupid for actually being there for them for helping them for supporting them for guiding them for being the only person who would actually care for them listen to them in the real way they also know it but they have to show it to you that they are doing it for you or you know they're not going to tell you how much they suffered when you were not around cuz they have to suffer without you that's how they also learn that's how their ego gets diminished so not only you're helping yourself but you're also helping the narcissist realize that the things that they're running after it's all illusionary so when they insult you or when they are mean to you and they go away from you and they do their own things they meet all the karmics and once a narcissist any narcissist has the experience of you once they get your experience it cannot be replaced by anything else or anyone else or whatever they do so they know there is something about you that they want to come back to you you know what that is that selfless love and care and concern so when they come back to you they are not going to tell you that hey you know what i was rude to you i misbehaved with you i went away from you i thought i can do without you but i suffered so much they can't tell you that because that's going to hurt their ego even more so they're going to be like yeah i was doing this i was doing that i was trying this blah 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 and i finally figured it out sometimes it takes them a couple of cycles to eventually surrender they are not surrendering to you actually they they assume that they are surrendering to you they look at you as a physical identity which is what uh kind of irritates them when they realize that they are not surrendering to you actually they are surrendering to the path which you also have surrendered to then they do better cuz you are surrendered to source you are not doing this is not your own world your country that you're running that's not your government that you're running you're working under god's government so when they eventually realize that the things that you're telling them are actually real things the habits the lifestyle it's a healthy lifestyle it's a good lifestyle it's going to make them happy now so many people who used to be against a lot of things that i used to do now they come and ask me for help and advice because they see that i'm living much healthy much happier lifestyle than them and they see that peace they see that uh, love of god i'm not boasting about it guys i'm not saying that oh look at me i'm so great i'm the greatest alexander the great blah 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 no i'm just saying that people who were against you i'm going to talk about you now and me i mean it's you me we are the same thing people who are against any idea any natural pure idea anything organic anything good they are going to contest it unnecessarily for a while they are going to argue debate don't argue with them don't debate with them let them be they say yeah the earth is pink in color say okay yeah earth is pink in color they say people can walk on water is yeah, okay people can walk on water do whatever you want to do say that to them be yourself be happy don't get impacted by anybody or anything that's your journey that's your path the only energy that should impact you is source surrender to master surrender to source that's it surrender to love love runs the world love is the only medicine that can heal all the sickness of this planet for personal sessions and therapies you can check out the description box and you can get my book in the name of love l triple u v only on amazon kindle that's where you get the latest edited version another important disclaimer is that if you book a session with me or you book a therapy with me then do not share everything in advance because when i see you the first time when i connect with you the first time i would be using intuitive tools and techniques to gauge into to do the energy scan to read energy to read energy i need to be everything has to be a blank slate if i tell you to send me questions then also i'll give you the step how to do it there's a step involved in it and those people who have already worked with me they know the process they know it they are pro at it now so i will see you in the next video thank you so much for being here thank you for helping in raising the vibration of this planet thank you for doing god's work 
I am thankful to you for doing God's work and I know you're also thankful to God for choosing you to do God's work. You're not doing a favor on God actually. We are happy to do this. We feel much better. We are much more at peace. We feel the contentment we do it. So God is rewarding us for everything. The rain has stopped and here I will on this lovely note I will close this channeling. I will see you in the next video. One love, peace out and victory to Ram.